now under British rule for over 200 years. This has sparked a separatist movement that has now been led by the FLQ, which has led to disobedience, violence, and even kidnapping. On October 5, 1970, a British trade minister by the name of James Cross was kidnapped in his home and held for ransom for the immediate release of FLQ members. Trade Commissioner in Montreal, James Richard Cross, is reported to have been kidnapped a short while ago from his Red Path Crescent home. To the people of Quebec, the terrorist threat was real. Within seven years, the FLQ managed to detonate 95 bombs, killing six people. By October 10th, they managed to kidnap Cabinet Minister Pierre Laporte. On October 12th, this was the need to bring in the military into the streets of Montreal. On October 13th, when being confronted by the press, Pierre Elliott Trudeau made his famous words in his entire political career. Those words were, on October 16th, under the stress of the two kidnappings, Pierre Elliott met with his cabinet and passed the War Measures Act at 4 a.m., taking away people's civil liberties. Despite the War Measures Act being put through, it came too late for Pierre Laporte. On October 17th, he was found dead in the back of an abandoned car. One day after the killing of Pierre Laporte, I was stuffed in the back of an abandoned car. FLQ political leader Rene Levesque denounces the implementation of the War Measures Act, expressing that it's excessive. Despite of the 95 bombings within the seven years and killing six people. Finally, by November 6, the police find the home where the FLQ terrorists were holding Pierre Laporte. There they found Bernard Lortier and arrested him. By, de by December 28th, the additional suspects were also arrested. Paul Rose, Jacques Rose, and Francis Simard. James Cross, who was kidnapped first, was kidnapped from a different cell of FLQ terrorists. They decided that it was not necessary to kill him and he was finally released. The historical significance that we must look at this crisis in particular and know that there was a clear and present danger in Quebec, but now with these new terror laws here in Canada, it is quite questionable about these terrorists. The government can't put a name, face, or even what country they're from. We have to be afraid of everybody and make it a police state where the government can now spy on you, freeze your bank accounts, and suspend the Constitution. What's to stop this bill from being used? to spy on the government's political enemies. It's only a matter of a couple of weeks before we got into this kind of conspiracy theory.